Listening 8 begins by calling the set name method, the set pin width method, and the set pin color method on the turtle object referred to by the variable named Sue. These are the same methods that I explained earlier, so I shouldn't need to explain them again. So I'm going to scroll down so that you can see the remaining methods that are called on the turtle object referred to by the reference variable named Sue to cause it to end up in the position that you see it on the bottom right of your screen. This code begins with a call to the move to method. The move to method causes the turtle to move to a new location on the basis of coordinate values instead of on the basis of distance values. In particular, we need to differentiate from the method named move to and the method named forward. The method named forward causes a turtle to move by a specified or default distance in the forward direction. The method named move to causes the, the turtle to move from its current location to a new location specified by a pair of coordinate values irrespective of the direction that it happens to be facing at the time. The call to the move to method in the upper right portion of your screen causes Sue the turtle to move from the initial location at the center of the screen to a location that I am pointing to now on the bottom right of your screen. At this point, I called the method named set pin down passing false as a parameter. Calling that method and passing false as a parameter is essentially the same as asking the turtle to lift, lift its pin so that it won't draw a line when it moves. Calling set pin down with true as a parameter asks the turtle to to lower its pin so that it will draw a line when it moves. So at this point I called the set pin down method passing a false parameter and the turtle named Sue lifted the pin. Following that I called the move to method asking the turtle to move to the coordinate values that I have just highlighted and to which I am now pointing in the bottom right portion of your screen. During that move the pin was lifted and a line was not drawn and this caused the gap in the red line that you see between this point and this point. Finally, I call the set pin down method again, passing true as a parameter, and then call the move to method, passing these coordinates as parameters, and this calls the turtle to move from the point that I am pointing to now, or the location that I'm pointing to now down to the final resting location that you see on the bottom right of your screen. It is important to note that when the turtle named Sue reached its final resting place, it was still facing north. This is because uh, it was not asked at any point along the way to rotate its body to face in a different direction. The 
highlighted line in the code on the upper right portion of your screen signals the end of the run method and then this line signals the end of the class named prob01runner. This signals the physical end of the source code for the program. Going back to the driver class on the right of your screen, you see that when the run method returns, the driver class calls the three accessor methods named getMars, getJoe, and getSue that I explained earlier. The call of these three methods produces text on the command line. And at that point then the main method ends. When the main method in a Java program ends, the program would like to terminate and return control to the operating system. However, if there is still an image showing on the screen that was caused by the program, the program will not terminate until the user forcefully causes that uh, image to be removed from the screen. Typically that can be done by clicking on the X in the upper left hand portion that I am pointing to now in the bottom right hand portion of your screen. Once again let's recap and see what we've done. In this lesson, I explained a program that uses Java along with a media class library provided by Barb Erickson at Georgia Tech University to add a picture object and two turtle objects to a world object. Following that, I called various methods on the turtle object to manipulate them, their color, and their pins to produce the output image that you see on the bottom right portion of your screen at this point. Stated in more detail, this program creates a picture object and replaces the default white picture object in a world object with the new picture object. It places two turtle objects in the world object. It applies a series of operations to manipulate the two turtle objects so as to produce the graphic output shown on the bottom right portion of your screen. It provides accessor methods to get references to the two turtle objects and the world object. It uses those accessor methods to get information from the world and turtle objects and to display that information on the command line screen as shown in this figure. Recall that the black text at the top of this figure was produced by the compiler and the runtime system during the compilation and initial execution of the program. The red text the four lines of red text on the bottom of this image were produced by actual program code in the program. And finally, the program displays text on a picture in a world object as shown by my name appearing in the upper left hand corner 
of the image on the bottom right of your screen. And that concludes lecture number one, titled Creating and Manipulating Turtles and Pictures in a World, where you learned how to create and manipulate turtle objects and picture objects in a world object using the Java programming language along with the media class library provided by Barb Erickson at Georgia Tech University. You will find more information on my website at www.dickbaldwin.com. Thank you.